Hello again, everyone. Um, so this is a follow-up to the last video. In the last video, I talked about how we had a flood down here, and that's the majority of the reason why I haven't uploaded anything in a while. Um, all right, so what this video is going to be about is um, af uh, after I uploaded that video, I got a lot of questions from a lot of different people. And I, I kind of collected all the questions, and I want to go through and answer them. And this will be kind of like a fact video, of, you know, frequently accessed, asked questions, or maybe a QA. and a I don't know what kids call it these days. I don't know what the hip thing is. Um, but these are these are questions. I have to be honest, I've, I have them all written down. And I don't... Uh, I didn't write down the context, so I have no idea who asked these, where they were asked, the places that they could have been asked, uh, comments in the original video. Um, uh, there were a variety of Discord channels that I shared this in. Um, uh, I shared this, like I said, in a work Slack uh, channel. Um, and then, of course, I shared it with family and friends. And so these these questions really could have come from any of those locations. Um, and I don't, right now, I don't remember where they, they all came from. So let's get into these questions. All right. <clears throat> and these are also in no particular order. It's just what I wrote down. Uh, all right. Do you have Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, etc., etc., etc.? This one I got from a couple of places, which I found kind of flattering <laughs> that people might want to follow me or interact with me in, in other capacities. Um, but the, the truth of the matter is, is I'm not very active on social media, so... I do have these things, but there's not a lot of stuff on them. Um, and each of them have caveats. Let's go through them. So on Twitter, uh, I am at Criswell Games. Probably put the text here. I'll probably put a link down in the description. Um, I don't really do much with Twitter. Uh, Twitter was always kind of a, a cesspool. Um, a, a, a flaming dumpster fire. It's not a pleasant place to be. And so I don't really do much with Twitter. And ever since uh, the man who must not be named, the, the billionaire who is not smart, I don't know why you people, why you, you fans of his think he's smart. He's not a smart man. And, and his purchase of Twitter has really just shown just brought his stupidity to the forefront. But the point is, is when he took over Twitter, I kind of left Twitter. And I wasn't really on Twitter much before, so it wasn't like this big leaving out of protest. It was just like, you know what, I'm done. Screw this. This isn't fun. Uh, but I do have a gaming account on Twitter. Like I said, it's at Criswell Games. Um, but the thing is that's interesting about it is that I don't... I never really shared... I never really tweeted directly from it, like I didn't log into my phone or go onto the desktop and tweet. Um, the reason Criswell Games exists is several years ago, I noticed that everything wanted a Twitter uh, account. Like, you know, my Nintendo Switch wanted a Twitter account. PlayStation 4 wanted a Twitter account. And I was like, you know, who in their right mind is going to give their Twitter account to all these different devices? And then I started thinking, well, what would it do with my Twitter account if I gave it my Twitter account? So I made Criswell Games with the express purpose of giving it to all of my devices. Um, and so literally, if you go there, well, all that you're going to find are videos and screenshots from the games that I played. Um, and again, I haven't posted in months. Um, I, I, about a, it was, there was a, 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 one of his mass firings after he bought Twitter, um, it broke integrations with different devices. And uh, I noticed that on Xbox, on my Xbox Series X and on my Nintendo Switch, they would error out. They wouldn't be, they weren't able to post t to Twitter. And so I kind of just viewed that as a good time to stop posting to Twitter <laughs> when the integration failed. Now, I haven't checked in months. Maybe the integration is fine. I don't really intend on going back there, but, you know, if, if there's enough interest, if I notice that there's a bunch of people following me now because of this video, I'll probably start posting again. But again, it's mostly just going to be videos and screenshots. Not really me interacting. So, you know, buyer beware if that 
has any relevancy. Um, on Twitch, I'm Chris Wellius. Um, I have streamed in the past. I've streamed on YouTube and on Twitch. But I will ad admit, 99% of the time when I, t when I stream, in, it's because I've got a friend who's like at work in a different time zone. And I'm done work with work and I want to play and he wants to see me see what I'm playing. So I'm literally just streaming for like an audience of one. <laughs> now, who knows? You never say never. Maybe at some point in the future I might start streaming more, but um, I don't know. I play video games for myself to enjoy, and I feel like if I had a, a, a streaming schedule, I wouldn't really enjoy playing my games. Um, hi, Jubs. Got a very noisy kitty that heard me talking, and now he wants to see what's up. Um, as far as TikTok... I'm also Chris Wellius at TikTok. I'm yet to post anything on Twi TikTok. I've got my account I've had for a couple of years now, I think. Um, I haven't ever posted anything because I didn't really know what I wanted to post. and I just kind of interacted with other videos, not really posting myself. But, um, you know, I think I am going to start uploading some video game stuff on that TikTok account because, um, I don't know, there's stuff I want to say, there's stuff I want to do. And TikTok seems to make sense. All right, next question. Um, is there anything you missed out on getting and regret? Uh, there's a couple of things. Um, I'd say the two big things are Neo Geo and a ColecoVision. So let's talk about the Neo Geo first. For those who might not know what the Neo Geo was, it was a home video game console that was literally arcade hardware. They had arcade Neo Geo machines that had identical hardware to the console that you could have at home. This was back in the 90s. And the cartridges, they were these giant, big, big cartridges. Uh, they were basically the same. I think the arcade cabinets used like a slightly different um, size or shape. But internally, they were, as far as I understand it, they were like the same guts. Um, and what was cool about it, like I said, sorry, I've got a cat moving this, this shelf and uh, he's going to bump that camera a bit. If it wobbles, that's what's going on. Um, but what was cool about the Neo Geo was it was arcade perfect. Your home console was identical to the arcade hardware which was really amazing back in the 90s. These days, that's not such a big deal. Arcades are dead, and, you know, home computers are so advanced that, you know, even if we had an arcade today, the home computers would probably be way more powerful than the machines in the arcade. But back then, it was a big deal to have a home console that had a, a, a parity in tech between the home console and the arcade. And the thing is, is that um, the Neo Geo was really expensive, um, I haven't looked it up. This number might be wrong. I'm just kind of what I remember. I seem to remember the console being like between $500 and $700 to buy it. And then the games were about $200 a game. That's, you know, 1990s money. That's a lot of money. And the truth of the matter is I, I just didn't have that money back then. I couldn't afford it. Um, I was in college. Um, I was about to get married to my first wife. I didn't have the money to go... Sorry, this cat's going crazy. Jubs, I'm gonna grab the cat. The cat's being bad. He won't stop making noise, so I'm gonna hold him for a moment. Well, I didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to, um, to go out and buy a Neo Geo or buy the games back in the 90s, so I never got it. But what happened was, about a decade later, I was living in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, Tucson, Arizona, yeah, sorry. Um, and there's a store out there called Bookman's, which if you're in the, you know, in Arizona, the state, Bookman's is all over the place. It's in Phoenix, it's in Flagstaff, and it's like this used books place that also has used video games. The point is, is about maybe, I would say maybe circa 2001, 2002-ish. Uh, I was living in Tucson, and I noticed at the local Bookman's that they had a Neo Geo. And the Neo Geo was probably about, 
maybe $200. And they had a whole bunch of games that were all about $50 each. That was the time that I should have bought a Neo Geo. But I didn't. I was an idiot. And, you know, I had, I had witnessed the previous two decades, I had witnessed game consoles and the games become cheaper and cheaper over time. Because by this point, you know, Atari 2600 games were like maybe a dollar each. So my logic at the time was, oh, it's just going to keep going down in price. So, I, you know, why spend $200 now when I could wait a year or two and it'll be 90 bucks? That never happened. <laughs> uh, they, they started raising in price. And now they're really expensive. And uh, in addition to that, you know, we now have HD televisions. And I have to be honest, I don't think, I, you know, I could run my I could run a Neo Geo through my RetroTink and it'd probably look okay. <sighs> but if I really want to play those games, they're available on modern platforms in HD. You know, I've got several Neo Geo collections. Um, like this guy. Right here. Metal, Gl Metal Slug Anthology. This is all of the Neo Geo Metal Slug games. And, you know, I've got ways to play the games is my point. So, yeah, I never actually got the Neo Geo. And I kind of regret not picking it up when it was as cheap as it was. Um, the other regret, the other uh, console I missed out on getting is the ColecoVision. Um, back in the 80s, in the late 70s, um, you, know, I, you know, I was a little kid. My parents were buying 100% of my games. And, you know, I had my Atari 2600, and I really loved it. Um, and I wanted a ColecoVision. I wanted one really bad, predominantly because it had the best port of Donkey Kong. And I was really a big fan of Donkey Kong, and the Atari 2600 port of Donkey Kong was really disappointing. And I wanted a ColecoVision. The problem is, um, there was a, a ColecoVision computer, which was basically the ColecoVision uh, in computer form. It had like a keyboard that you could use. Um, and it had these dual tape drives in front of it. This was back before disk drives were really prevalent and computers had tapes. Um, and what was really cool was like it had file systems on the tapes. Like normally when you put a tape into one of these these old computers, you know, you would it, it would just play and load the program off of the tape sequentially. But this thing could like store files. And I remember seeing one in action and you put the tape in and you'd, you'd load something and the tape would like be spinning back and forth as it'd be finding the file, which was incredibly cool in like early 80s. I mean, even these days, that's a pretty cool piece of tech. Um, probably really suspect to, uh, um, um, probably really prone to mechanical failure. Might have been a hard thing to maintain. But the point is, is I was holding out for a ColecoVision computer. So we were out in the middle of nowhere. We were out in, in rural Wyoming. Uh, the nearest place that sold games was a Sears in a, a mall 20 miles away. Um, they did not have the ColecoVision or the computer or anything. Um, the nearest place that had one was Salt Lake City, which was three hours away. And, you know, we just never went out and bought me one. <laughs> I never, so I never got one. And uh, that's another one that, you know, maybe when I was a little bit older, I could have probably picked it up pretty inexpensively, and I didn't. And I do regret that. That is the other big thing that I regret. The Neo Geo and, you know, a ColecoVision. Because I really wanted a ColecoVision as a kid. All right. Next question. Do you have any arcade or pinball cabinets? So when this question was asked, the answer is no. <laughs> but since then, uh, I have actually purchased uh, a... There was a sale um, a couple weeks back. Uh, it's been like a month at this point, at the time of recording, I should say, um, where uh, the arcade one-up stuff was all like on sale at like Best Buy. And I went and I picked up their Attack from Mars pinball 
machine. So I do have that, and it's a virtual pinball, and it's got Attack from Mars and, you know, like a bunch of other games. Um, so I do have that. Uh, as far as an arcade cabinet, I don't. I, uh, I want to build one and, and have it be powered by MAME, um, but I haven't done it. I, I have an old gaming laptop, which is more, has more than enough power to power this thing, um, that I've kind of set aside for this main cabinet, but I've just not done it. I'm busy. I have work. I have a family. I don't have a lot of time to devote to building this thing. And I just, I haven't yet. Um, maybe one of these days I will. I really want to. Um, I will also say, and this is a long shot. I'm not sure I will ever do this. I also wanted to build an arcade cabinet with a racing stick, like with a racing wheel, something you'd sit in and could play things like pole position or, or outrun or, or be able to play modern PC racing games on it. Um, and my thought is that I'd actually put it in the middle of the room here because there's kind of a big gap. I know that the camera's right here and you can't see it, but other than some shelves, there's a big gap here. Um, the thing is, though, the racing one is probably going to be a little bit too hard to really do properly. I'm six foot four, and trying to get something that would fit me might be a little challenging. Um, it would involve probably a lot of carpentry, which I can't do. So it's not likely that I will do that one, but it is kind of like my wish list that if, if I really had enough time or enough money or enough whatever... To do it properly, I'd love to do that. But as far as an arcade cabinet concerned, at some point I do intend to build one um, to, to power MAME. All right, next question. Uh, are there any consoles you don't have that you're keeping an eye out for? Um, there's a few. I already mentioned the Neo Geo, and I will admit, if I you know if I came across a good uh, a good Neo Geo. Um, Something out there that was that was in good condition and it worked well. If I were to find a Neo Geo and it was, you know, in reasonable condition and uh, it was a reasonable price, you yeah, know, I think I would pick it up. Um, other ones that I've, I've, I've kind of been passively looking for, uh, the Philips CDI. Here's the deal. The Philips CDI is not a good console. I know it's not a good console. It doesn't have great games on it. I know this. I've played quite a few of them. But from a, a, from a, a video game collection um, history, historical standpoint, I kind of want one. <laughs> um, and and the, the reason that I haven't gotten one yet is because, I don't know, it just has to, it has to hurt, hit a certain price point before I can really justify buying it, knowing that the vast majority of the games for it I won't really enjoy. <laughs> because I am, a, I am a gamer first and a collector second. So I'm not just going to go get something just to have it as a collectible. I want to play things, and if I don't want to play it, then it's just probably not going to happen. All right, next question. Uh, what is your favorite era of video games or favorite console? This was actually asked by, um, I know this one. This is the only question that I know who asked it. Because this was asked by uh, one of the founders of the company I work for. <laughs> one of the co-founders. Um, so pretty big in the company. Um, uh, so to answer your question, <laughs> she probably won't see this. Who knows? Maybe she will. I don't know. But... Um, to answer that question was my favorite one. I don't, it's hard to say, when you have this many games and this many consoles, it's really hard to say that you have a favorite. Because, you know, you tend to really like them all. And so picking favorites feels wrong. Um, but that being said, you know, you can kind of approach this, this question in an interesting way and kind of get at the answer that you're looking for. If you, if you look at it, there's kind of two ways to look at it. One way to look at it is... You know, how many games do I have for a given platform? And then the other way to look at it, which is a little bit less concrete, is to kind of ask what the, the lasting um, effects a given platform or generation might have on you. Uh, meaning, you know, 
Are you still, is it, you know, 15, 20 years down the line and you're still playing games for that thing or still collecting for it? Um, and if you approach it from those two ways, um, the, the, the console that I have the most games for is actually the Nintendo Switch. So you might say that I really love the Nintendo Switch, I really love the current generation, and I do, I really do love it. However, as far as the second criteria is concerned, the, the longevity of it, the Nintendo Switch is still fairly new. And I have no idea if I'm still going to be playing and collecting Nintendo Switch games 20 years from now. But, Sega Genesis, the Sega Genesis used to be the console I had the most games for. It was eclipsed by the Switch, actually this last year. Uh, but it's still in like the top three as far as the consoles that I have the most games for. And, you know, it's something that, what is it? It's been 30 years since this thing came out. I'm still buying new games for it. They're still making games for it. I mean, it's all independent stuff, stuff that you have to kickstart and whatnot. Um, but I'm still buying new games for it. I'm still collecting for it. And I still play the, the Sega Genesis games constantly. I've got a, an analog SG, so I'm not actually technically playing on the original hardware. I know some people are going to you know throw a fit at that, but I kind of want to have my original hardware keep in good condition. So I do play on my analog SG. And, you know, 30 years later, I'm still playing these games. So, I think if I really had to answer this honestly, this question honestly, I would probably say the Sega Genesis or the 16-bit era as, like, my favorite era and my favorite console. Because I do. I have a ton of games for it. 30 years on, I'm still playing and collecting. And it's, it's just, it's had a really long-lasting effect it's the, the one console that I have spent the most time with in my life. Um, so yeah, Sega Genesis, 16-bit. That stuff's cool. Uh, next question. Have you played every game? <laughs> All right, this one. It kind of depends on what you define as playing. <laughs> the, the short answer is yes. Um, I have every single game in my collection I have put into the console that the game is for. I've turned it on and I have played it for a bit. Um, the, the, the thing is, though, what you're really probably asking when you're saying, have you played every game, is you're probably asking, have you beaten every game? And the answer to that is no. First of all, not every game has an ending. You know, you go back past a certain point in video game history and none of the games had endings. Um, so it's, you know, have you played the game to an ending or have you, you know, reached a certain point of mastery in it? And if you ask that question, I would say probably about 70%, and this is a just a rough ballpark, of the games that I own, I have played through to a, a point of mastery or a, a, a point where it's an ending. Um... It's about 70%. Uh, there's, you know, there's some games that I get and I don't really, I don't get into them as much and I bounce off. But I usually try to come back to them. It's, it's pretty rare that I don't ever come back to a game and never, you know, never finish it, never really do stuff. So for the most part, I would say 70%. 70% I have played and beaten. But every single one of them I have put in and played, you know, for like 5 to 10 minutes at a minimum. Uh, but... 70% of them I've completed. Um, next question. What are you playing right now? <clears throat> I don't remember who asked this, uh, but they asked it back in 2021. <laughs> and I didn't answer it. And uh, I'm playing... Whatever I'm playing now is not what I played then. Uh, so here's the deal. I, I don't want to give you the information right now and, and have it be out of date. So what I've decided to do is... I've also been trying to come up with, like, what can I upload to the channel that I could do at a regular basis um, that's not going to overwhelm me because I'm, I'm busy, I want to play games, I work. Uh, and what I've decided to do is I actually do want to upload possibly we weekly. We'll figure it out if I really stick to it. But I want to upload uh, periodic videos saying what I'm playing and what I've finished. So watch for that, and I'll answer this question in that video.
All right, next question. What is your weirdest, uh, what is your weirdest collectible? Um, here it is. I know it was behind me. The weirdest collectible I have is this. Now, what is this? <clears throat> this is Hyperlight Drifter, which is, it's a, it's a RPG, uh, it's got vaguely Souls-like combat. It has kind of a, almost a Zelda feel to it, sort of. Um, it's fun. It's a great game. I really enjoy it. This collectible is a box uh, that contains, I don't know, there's something in the box. I don't know what it is. It's probably a manual, maybe other little pieces of tack. Um, and then a fake cartridge. This is not a real cartridge. It's a fake Super Nintendo cartridge. There's no actual game in here. Uh, this was a... Who did this? Is it I Am 8-Bit? Doesn't have any information on it. I don't know who did this. But there was this thing where you could pre-order this... And they'd give you a Steam key, key for the game. And so the actual game was a Steam key. But then this shipped like six months later. And it's a box with stuff in it and a fake SNES cartridge. That is undeniably the weirdest collectible, collectible I have. I, um, you know, you go back to that question, what's your most valuable item? This is one of those things I have no idea what the value on it might be. I don't know how to insure this. I, I don't know. I don't even know who would want this. Why do I want this? I don't I don't know. It's cool though. A little cool fake SNES cartridge with like important safety instructions on the back. This game pack must be cleaned regularly. No, it must not be. There's no game in here. You silly pretend little game. That's the weirdest collectible I have. Uh, the final question, this is the final question. This has been a long video, but this is the final question. The final question is, are there any games you keep going back to? Uh, yes. There are games that I, I am constantly replaying. Um, <clears throat> I am a big fan of Souls games, Souls-like games. Uh, and Dark Souls 1... I think since Dark Souls 1 originally came out, I have probably played it at least once a year. Um, I own it for so many different platforms. Uh, I have it on the original Xbox 360. I own the original PC version. I also own the remastered on PC. I own the remastered on uh, the Nintendo Switch. I own the remastered on the Xbox One. Um, I think I own it digitally for the PlayStation 4. Point is, is I, you know, probably once a year, I go back and I replay that. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've replayed Dark Souls 1. Um, Doom 1993 is another one. I have this yearly tradition uh, that I call my Doom walkabout, where I go and I play Doom 1993. I pick, I have, I have virtually every version of Doom 1993 that exists. And I, every year for my Doom walkabout, I will go and I will pick one of the versions to play. Last year, I bought the last version that I, that I was missing, and I played it, and it was rough. Hold on. It's uh, Doom 1993 for the 3DO. This was the last version uh, that I didn't own, and I bought it last year, and I played it. And this is an incredibly rough version to play. This is... This is the least pleasant version of Doom that there is. SNES Doom, you might think that's a garbage version. SNES Doom has this one beat. It is vastly superior. <laughs> it is much more playable. Anyway, uh, yeah, Doom Walkabout every year. And last year was this. Um, another game that I go back, I, I love Galaga. I play Galaga... I think every month I pick up some, I, I play Galaga on something. Um, I've got a, a Game Boy Color that Galaga, the Galaga Galaxian combo cart, permanently lives in that Game Boy Color. 
It's like, it's on the shelf. I'm looking at it right now. And if I were to go over there right now, I know the cartridge would be in there. Because if I ever want to play it, I'll just go grab that Game Boy Color and I'll go play it somewhere. Um, other games that I play, I, I love the Sonic, the original Sonic games. Um, I, I go back and I play Sonic 2 a lot. I wouldn't say that it's yearly, but it is one that I do return to quite a bit. Uh, Yar's Revenge for the Atari 2600. That's like my go-to. I, I, I play that so often. Um, I, I, I've got it on my Evercade now. And I've got a little um, a little bag, protective bag for my Evercade. And it's got uh, pockets for the, the games, the cartridges. The cartridge that has the, the Atari cartridge that's got Yar's Revenge on it is always in that bag. Because no matter where I am, if I'm on the road somewhere, I will probably want to play Yar's Revenge. Um, also, on the Atari 2600, the Atari 2600 version of Asteroids. That's my comfort food. I will sit there and play that stupid thing for hours. I can just... I will not die. I have to stop playing. Because it's not a terribly hard version of Asteroids, but it is one that I will just sit there and just for hours, just like zen zone out and play it. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few games that I do go back. The thing is, is that I, you know, I have a pretty big backlog of games to play. So I do try to not go back and play very often, but there are some games that I just really love and I really have to play again. Um, and I've mentioned them. All right. So that is, yep. That's all of the questions. Um, if there's any more questions, leave them down below, and I might make another one of these videos sometime in the future. Uh, but that's it for now. Bye. Keep gaming. I don't really know how to end videos like this. A little song and dance, or show up, hold up a collectible. Look at this. Steelbook for Sally Face to the Nintendo Switch. All right, that's it. Goodbye.